Now, what we looked at so far is when we know everything and all the x's in our model are known. Now, in reality, we also like the moving average part. The auto average part is often easy to handle, but we cannot use the moving average part. We cannot do it with regression directly. So given parameters, though, then we can estimate what is then the prediction errors, and then we can use those to estimate a linear regression model. So now the x here is no longer just a fixed thing. What it does contain is called x. It depends on time. I'll just do the transpose of this. It depends on a parameter vector. And what it contains is, well, it could be many things, but let's just assume there's an AMA model. So it contains the previous observations in here that we have always, and I'll just don't write them all, just dot, 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 and then down to y t minus p. So those are all the usual things for the AMA model. Now what we need is the epsilons. So what we just said is that we can make an estimate of epsilon t minus 1 given a set of parameters. Likewise, we can do for all the previous epsilons down to epsilon t minus q. Again, it's a function of theta. So that's the structure. So all of a sudden, our x becomes a function of the parameters. And that's why we call it pseudo-linear regression because it's no longer a pure linear regression. What we minimize is the same. We will do it recursively again. And the algorithm down here is exactly the same as before, except that the xt here, we need to recalculate that at each point in time, because it depends, the epsilon there depends on the parameters that we has just estimated.